The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is the classic tale of a young boy growing up to become a drink salesman. Over the course of the game you do three dungeons as a kid, and then you have to turn into an adult to beat the rest of the game. But what if that wasn't the case? After all, in Majora's Mask, Young Link is the hero the whole way through, and in Smash Bros he can defeat Ganondorf and Ganon. He seems capable enough to me. So, using nothing but the game's own mechanics, is it possible to beat Ocarina of Time using only Young Link? In this video I'm gonna find out. The rules are simple. First, and most obviously, Link can never turn into an adult. The entire game must be completed while Link is still a kid. Second, each dungeon gives you a heart container and a stone or medallion, and for this playthrough, I must make it into every dungeon and collect either the heart container or the stone or medallion of each dungeon. I can also collect both if I want. Only needing to get one of the two might seem like a strange rule, but you'll see later on why I did it this way. Those are the only two rules. As long as I'm young Link, everything is fair game. So let's get started. After giving my character the canon name, he woke up at home in Kokiri Forest. Now since the first three dungeons are supposed to be done as a kid, for the most part the first section of the game isn't very different from a regular playthrough. I got a sword and shield, entered the Great Deku Tree, and defeated Goma in the basement. After beating her, I got the heart container and entered the warp to get the Kokiri's Emerald. Very important note, if you're following along with this playthrough for some reason, don't enter this warp and don't get the Kokiri's Emerald. Get the heart container, then save the game and reset it to end up at the dungeon entrance, then leave and exit Kokiri Forest using a glitch. You'll see why this is so important much later on, but this was a mistake on my part. After that I left the forest, and the rest of the child section went mostly the same as ever. I met Zelda, went through Dodongo's cavern to get the Goron's Ruby, then saved Princess Rudo and got the Zora's Sapphire. While doing this, I made sure to upgrade my bomb bag to the maximum size of 40, and found some gold sculptulas to upgrade my wallet so I could grab 50 bomb chews as well. These items are going to be crucial to completing this challenge, so I wanted to make sure to get them. I also got stuff like two bottles and Din's fire along the way. Something worth noting is that when you buy a set of bomb chews at the bomb chew shop, it's sold out permanently. It never restocks. So when you buy all of the store's bomb chews, the store is empty for good, and you have to get bomb chews some other way. Just something worth keeping in mind for later. After getting all three stones, I returned to the castle, where Zelda ran away with Impa, and Ganondorf appeared and knocked me down. Then I got the Ocarina of Time, which meant it was time for the real adventure to begin. The game expects you to head to the Temple of Time next, where you travel forward in time to become an adult, but instead I just headed back to Kokiri Forest. In Ocarina of Time, all of the adult dungeons are present in the world when you're a kid, but you just can't get to them because you need tools and abilities that are exclusive to Adult Link. But there are ways to get around that. I headed to the entrance of the Forest Temple, where you get Saria's song as a kid. Normally, you use the hookshot as an adult to jump up to the temple entrance, but since Young Link can't use that, I performed a glitch called the Infinite Sword Glitch. If you stab with your sword and interrupt it with another action, like grabbing a bomb, then you'll be infinitely attacking with your sword until you do certain other actions, like slashing the sword again yourself. This glitch has some other effects. By backflipping into a bomb just as it explodes, you can float in the air. So using this glitch you can gain height infinitely, at least until you run out of explosives. Using this glitch I hovered my way up to the Forest Temple entrance, and made it inside as Young Link. After doing the first room like normal, I entered the temple and headed for the grassy room. Then I started climbing up the vines, and performed another glitch. I let go of the vines, then grabbed back onto them and pulled out a bomb chew at the same time. The explosion forced Link through the wall, where he fell down to the bottom floor. The bottom floor was only partially loaded. I could still walk around, but it was all invisible. Fortunately, one of the things that wasn't loaded was the locked door leading to the boss. So after I fell down, all I had to do was walk forward in the darkness a tiny bit to enter the loading zone and end up in the boss room. The boss here was Phantom Ganon. Amazingly enough, the Phantom Ganon fight is actually easier as a kid than it is as an adult. For the first part of the fight, it's basically the exact same as it is for Adult Link. Phantom Ganon comes out of paintings, and you're expected to use the bow to shoot at him, but as a kid, you can actually just use the slingshot for identical effect. After you do that a few times, Phantom Ganon starts flying around. This part of the fight is an absolute joke as a kid. He's designed to block your attacks until you play tennis with him to stun him, but as a kid you have access to the boomerang, and he actually just doesn't know how to work around that. Run below him, throw the boomerang at him, and you knock him down immediately every single time. Get some attacks in until he gets back up, and repeat until he's defeated. After winning the fight I grab the heart container. Now if you enter the portal here, the cutscenes that follow are pretty cool to see as Young Link. 
But either way, there's a problem with this cutscene. After a certain point, the game actually freezes. This is why in the rules, I specified that I only need to get the heart container or the medallion from dungeons. This adventure is very full of glitches, so sometimes these cutscenes don't work properly. Apparently if you do a crazy precise glitch you can skip the cutscene and get the medallion, but to me that doesn't really feel necessary. I defeated the boss, I got the heart container, I clearly beat the temple. I'm still getting one of the rewards for beating the temple. I saved and reset the game to end up back at the entrance, then headed outside. One temple down. After that I headed back to Hyrule Castle Town. It's a little weird to be coming back to the regular undestroyed version of the town after completing the forest temple, but it was pretty neat too. I came here to replenish my bombs at the shop. I also made sure to grab fairies for my bottles. The next temple has a gimmick that could make things much more difficult, so I wanted to have fairies so they could revive Link if he got defeated. My next destination was the fire temple. To get to the temple entrance, you need to get across a broken bridge, and even if you do that, the way to the entrance is blocked off by rocks. Doing all of this is supposed to be impossible as a kid. On top of that, the gimmick I mentioned comes into play here. In this crater, as well as inside of the fire temple itself, most rooms with lava in them are too hot for Link, and have a timer that instantly defeats you if it hits zero. As an adult, you get around this by equipping the Goron tunic, but young Link can't equip other tunics, so I had no choice but to deal with the timer in those rooms. Having two fairies meant I could be revived twice, and once you're revived, the timer resets. With the amount of heart containers I currently had, entering a room at full health gave me a 56 second timer, meaning that two fairies would give me almost 3 minutes in a single room. Before any of that though, I had to actually make it to the temple, and to do that I performed a glitch called a mega flip. To do it, you put down a bomb, face it, and step back until the A button says attack instead of grab, then roll into it while shielding as it explodes and then immediately backflip. If you get the timing right, Link gets sent flying backwards, and can cover lots of distance. Using this trick, I jump to the platforms on the west side of the room, then jump to the rock with the heart piece on it, and finally jump to the bridge below, making it over the rocks. After that it was a mad dash to the temple entrance. I ran in, jumped down, and ran for the opening. It took a few tries, but eventually the approach that worked was to back walk to the top of the ladder, since back walking is faster than walking forward, then side hopping down the ladder and running forward into the entrance. Doing it this way, I made it in with less than a second left on the clock. An exciting start to the temple. The first bit of the temple wasn't too different from normal. I ran around freeing the Gorons to get the keys as usual. There were a few spots where I couldn't play like normal though. For example, some ledges that Adult Link can grab are too tall for Young Link, so to get up them, I had to perform the ground jump glitch, which basically lets you jump straight up to gain some extra height. There were a few times where I ducked back to the entrance room too. The timer in the lava rooms is based on how many hearts you have when you enter the room, so I wanted to keep my hearts as full as possible. After getting a few keys, I had to get through the center lava room, enter into another lava room, push a block onto a geyser, then ride it up to the next floor all on one timer, since the timer transfers between rooms if they both have lava in them. I moved as fast as I could, and thankfully I made it with a bit of time to spare. The next room required me to use multiple glitches to make it through. Young Link doesn't have the items you're supposed to use to get around here, so I had to hover up a wall to get up, and then do the clipping glitch I did in the forest temple to get through a wall and make it to the next Goron for the key. After proceeding a little bit, I reached the next room of note, the one with the wall of fire. This room has the wall of fire coming after you, but young Link can't get to the areas you're supposed to get to normally. Instead, I briefly jumped into the lava to make the wall pass through me, which gave me a bit of time before it came back around. Then I had to do a hover to get to a door, but doing it with regular bombs isn't fast enough, since you have to wait for them to explode. Instead, I had to do it with bomb chews. After doing the infinite sword glitch, by pulling out the slingshot holding Z, backflipping, and then shooting and exploding a bomb chew while shielding, you can hover much faster without needing to wait. This method took me quite a while to get the hang of, but once I did, I actually found it easier than the regular bomb method. And so I made it up the wall and to the door to proceed. After making my way through a few more rooms, I made it to the Megaton Hammer. This item is required to defeat the boss at the end of the dungeon. Unfortunately, young Link can't use it. Or so you would think. By doing a simple glitch called Equip Swap, I can equip the hammer onto young Link. And once it was equipped, I could use it just fine as young Link. The hammer is invisible, but it actually works perfectly. After getting it, I jumped off and played the Song of Time to reach another Goron. After getting the key from the chest, I saved the game and reset to get back to the entrance. With the hammer equipped, I was now able to get to the door on the right side of the entrance room. The rooms inside went basically the same as normal. I fought some enemies, fought the same mini-boss I'd faced earlier in the dungeon, and finally got my hands on the boss key. 
I headed back to the entrance, and after refilling my health, I headed to the room on the left, where I did a mega flip to get to the platform with the boss key door, and at last I had made it to the end of the fire temple. Unfortunately, this didn't mean it was smooth sailing yet. The boss's room was filled with lava as well, and that meant that the clock was ticking the entire time I was fighting. I'd managed to avoid using any of my fairies up to this point, which meant I had about 3 minutes to take Volvagia down. Fortunately, I was able to pull it off. There's a trick you can do to defeat Volvagia very quickly, where you throw bomb chews into the last hole it flew into, because a hitbox gets stored there for some reason. If you're fast enough, you can defeat Volvagia in a single cycle using this trick. I wasn't able to do that, but by doing the trick a few times and using the hammer on Volvagia when it appeared, I was able to take it down. I used up both of my fairies, but I made it. Another cool thing was that unlike the forest temple, the cutscene here didn't freeze, so I was able to actually keep the fire medallion. I got the heart container, then jumped into the warp and got the medallion. And then something interesting happened. After the cutscene ended, I was placed back in the Death Mountain crater, but most of the geometry was invisible. My best guess is that it tried to load me into the adult version of the map as young Link and didn't quite know what to do, but I don't really know why this happened. But I did notice that the rocks blocking the entrance to the fire temple were not present in this version of the map. This gave me an idea. In this crater there's a great fairy fountain that doubles the size of your magic meter, but there are rocks blocking the entrance, so you need the hammer to get rid of them, unless you do another glitch I wasn't good at earlier. Obviously I had the hammer now, but since I had the chance I thought it would be cooler to get into the fountain on this version of the map. Using the minimap to navigate, I did a mega flip over to the platform, then ran right in, since the rocks weren't loaded on this version of the map. After that I exited the crater through the Goron City entrance. This put me right in front of Darunia, who I just saw 5 seconds ago in the Chamber of Sages. I headed back to the castle town to replenish my bombs and bomb chews, then got 2 more fairies from the forest. While I was in the forest, I also took the chance to replenish all of the Deku items, like sticks and slingshot ammo. The enemies and grass inside and around the Great Deku Tree had them all, so I just ran in and out of the dungeon until they were filled up. And with that, my next destination was Lake Hylia, and not for the reason you might expect. The next temple was the Water Temple, which is accessed from Lake Hylia. But before heading there, I wanted to do something cool. I headed to the fishing pond. For 20 rupees you can go fishing here, and if you catch the big fish, you can get a prize from the counter. As young Link, this prize is a heart piece, and as adult Link, it's the Golden Scale, which lets you dive really deep into water. Since I was young Link, the golden scale is supposed to be inaccessible, but by catching the big fish, swimming to the center of the lake, holding Z and R, and then talking to the guy at the counter without releasing the buttons, for some reason he glitches and gives you the golden scale. This item is entirely optional, but I thought it was a cool trick so I wanted to do it. Back outside, it was time to enter the temple. Normally you have to open a gate, which makes it so you can get to the entrance. Instead, I headed for the laboratory on the shore. By walking at this corner and then backflipping, you can clip inside the house. Then you can jump through the opening in the ground to fall out of bounds. The water from the lake extends downwards infinitely, but doesn't extend all the way horizontally. So you can swim out of it to start falling, and then pull yourself back in to re-enter the water from lower down. I did this until I was very far down out of bounds, and then started swimming in the direction of the temple entrance. Since I was so far down, I was able to stay out of bounds all the way back up, which let me swim into the loading zone for the temple and get inside. Now the water temple is this game's most infamous dungeon. To get to the boss room, you need the long shot, which you get inside the temple. But even if you do the equip swap glitch, Young Link can't actually use the long shot, and the game will freeze. Fortunately, I can very easily hover across the gap to the boss door from the very first room in the temple. Once there, I climbed the ramp to the boss door. I don't have the boss key, but fortunately, just like in the forest temple, I can skip it. I started by doing two bomb hovers into the air. Then I dropped a bomb and pulled out my sword just as it exploded. Pulling out the sword cancels the infinite sword glitch and sends Link back down to the ground, and the bomb's explosion clips him through the boss door, letting me get inside the boss room. Once inside, I had to fight Morpha. This actually isn't as much of a problem as you might think. If you look up guides for this game, they'll all tell you to use the long shot on the boss, but that's actually not necessary at all. When the boss's arm starts appearing, if you jump into the water the arm will grab at you and the ball thing will start bouncing around to try and hit you. Climb back on land, and it'll still be bouncing around, allowing you to hit it with a spin attack. Do this enough times, and you can take it down. Now let me tell you, this is some of the most agonizingly boring Ocarina of Time gameplay you can get. It takes absolute ages and is very annoying, but it can be done. I grabbed the heart container, and this medallion cutscene also didn't freeze. 
the Zora princess Link met at breakfast this morning somehow aged seven years, and some person he's never met tells him that the lake is finally back to normal and full of water, even though I swam in it before I even did anything in the temple. I headed back to the castle town. Most of my items were still full, but I'd used 13 bomb chews. The shop only had sets of 20 left, which meant I'd be missing out on some of them since you can only hold 50. I chose to keep those in stock for later, so to replenish my bomb chews, I played the bowling game to win some. I also got a heart piece at the same time, which was the fourth one I'd collected, so I got another container. I also went back to the forest to grab more fairies, since I had used both in the last boss fight. Next I headed for the graveyard in Kakariko Village. The entrance to the Shadow Temple is here, but it's out of reach. As usual though, hovering can get me up to the entrance. Din's fire lit the torches, and I was in. As soon as you get inside, there's a large gap. You're supposed to use the long shot to get over it, but I just hovered over. For the most part, for this dungeon I actually just followed a glitchless speedrun route. I figured that this would probably work, because the item you get in this dungeon for Adult Link are the hover boots. These basically let you glide in midair for a second, which meant that for any points where they're supposed to be required, I could just do bomb hovers instead. And that's basically what I did. I followed the glitchless speedrun route, and added in bomb hovers where I needed them as Young Link to get across gaps or gain some extra height. At one point during the temple, I had to save the game and reset so I'd get sent back to the entrance. I took the chance to leave the dungeon entirely and replenish my items, which is something I don't normally get a chance to do mid-dungeon. There was another room along the way that was a lot different than normal. This room is full of fans. They blow you around, but since I was young Link and didn't have access to things like the long shot, I had no choice but to hover across the gaps, which was way too slow to do before the fans start going. Since the infinite sword glitch stopped you from falling off ledges, I activated it before entering the range of the fans, then ran through the hall and initiated a hover, which kept me stuck in the air. However, if I tried to backflip when the fan behind me was blowing, it would send me flying forward and ruin it. On top of that, each fan goes at a slightly different time, so I couldn't even use the one in front of me for reference. I just had to listen for the fan behind me and jump. Once I got across, the infinite sword glitch prevented me from being pushed off, so I was able to make it to the next room. This room had fans too, but all I really had to do was aim Link towards each fan so he'd grab the ledge when it started blowing, and then work my way forward until I reached the last one, at which point I used its air to jump to a door. A little further on, I pushed a block over to a ladder. Now that the block was out of the way, I could get back to this area as a shortcut, so I decided to leave and replenish my items once again. This dungeon definitely took a lot more items than some of the previous ones had. Back in the dungeon, I hovered up to the top of the block I pushed, then rode the boat and made it to the next area. Here I got a small key, and also finally made it to the boss key. With the boss key in hand, all I had to do now was make it to the boss. Unfortunately, one more hurdle stood in my way. Back in the room where the boat was, you're supposed to shoot a fire arrow at bombs across the gap to knock down a statue you can use as a bridge. Since I couldn't do that, I instead had to hover all the way across, which used up a ton of bomb chews. After opening a door with a small key, the boss door was in sight. I just had to jump across a few invisible platforms. One of them seemed too far for Young Link to reach, but a Mega Flip was able to get me across. And with that, I jumped over to the boss door and headed in. The next boss was Bongo Bongo. You're expected to use the Lens of Truth, but it's not actually necessary. You can hit the weak point when it's invisible if you can find it. The easiest way I found to do this is to stun both hands by damaging them. They'll start sliding at you, and the main boss will always be in between them. Once it's vulnerable, I did a jump slash with a Deku Stick, and then did crouch stabs with the Kokiri Sword. Deku Sticks are actually much stronger than the Kokiri Sword is, and crouch stabs are glitched in this game and always take the power of the last attack you did. So by crouch stabbing, I'm attacking with the power of a Deku Stick jump slash over and over. Repeat this process a few times, and Bongo Bongo goes down. After grabbing the heart container, I headed into the warp. Impa told Link about events seven years ago, but he just met her like a few hours ago, so I'm not really sure what she's on about. And unfortunately, the game froze after this cutscene. So like with the Forest Temple, this was another case where I just have to take the heart container as proof of my victory. After stocking back up, my next destination was Gerudo Valley. Normally, this area is completely off limits until you're an adult, but by hovering over the gate without the guard seeing me, I was able to get in. After enjoying a moment of rest in a tent that won't exist for seven years, I entered the Gerudo's fortress. I headed directly for the gate that led to the haunted wasteland. You're supposed to complete a quest here as an adult to open the gate, but instead of doing that, I just climbed up to the top of the watchtower and hovered over the fence, letting me head straight into the wasteland. The haunted wasteland itself is also a bit of an ordeal. Using a specific route through the area, you can actually make it to the spirit temple yourself, just like this. 
It's actually not very hard if you have the route on hand, though there was an interesting trick or two required. Before too long, I reached the Spirit Temple. But I gotta be honest with you here. Going into the Spirit Temple, I knew that the item you get from this dungeon is the Mirror Shield, which isn't part of the regular item inventory, and that meant that I couldn't use the Equip Swap glitch to equip it on Young Link. On top of that, doing some research, I found out that if you glitch your way up to the boss area, a mandatory enemy actually doesn't spawn if you're Young Link, making it impossible to move forward. And even if you could, the actual bosses in the next room require the Mirror Shield to defeat them. Now apparently, these issues can be solved by doing some absolutely insane glitches. For example, arbitrary code execution is possible in this game, which basically lets you do anything you want. You can warp anywhere, get any item, equip anything, see any cutscene, anything's possible. But I tried looking around online for explanations, and to me, it all looked like gibberish. From what I was able to gather, the numbers and letters refer to Link's angle, and ESS is short for a glitch called Extended Super Slide, but this is a little too complicated for me. <laughs> also, I think to take advantage of some parts of these glitches, you might have to use specific file names and play on the Japanese version or something. I don't really know, but my understanding is that basically, using these glitches, you can manipulate the game however you want, so you can equip the Mirror Shield as Young Link, load directly into the boss room, and win the fight that way. But I've got no idea how to do it. <laughs> Luckily though, I still had a plan. As you might remember, at the start of the video I said in the rules that I had to make it into each dungeon, and also collect either the heart container or the medallion of each dungeon. I made it into the Spirit Temple to fulfill the first half of that, which was an interesting journey in itself. But if making it to the end of the dungeon to get the medallion normally was out of the picture, then I could still fulfill the second half of these conditions if I managed to get the medallion some other way. I exited the temple, then saved the game and reset so I'd be back in Kokiri Forest. I headed into the Lost Woods and used up both of my fairies, then caught bugs in the empty bottles. Next, I headed back to Kakariko Village. There, I threw a Deku Nut at a Kuko, which did damage to it. If I were to hit it with a bomb at this point, that would be enough damage that the cutscene where the Kuku started attacking would play. Next to the tree near the town entrance, there's a carpenter complaining about his workers. When you're an adult, and only when you're an adult, this guy is part of a series of trading side quests, and he'll give you the broken Goron sword in exchange for another item as part of those quests. But again, that's for adult Link only. Young Link cannot receive the broken Goron sword, since that side quest is only available as adult Link. However, if I bring the Kukko a good distance away from the guy, drop a bomb next to the Kukko, and then run over to the guy and talk to him as the bomb explodes, his text box will appear, but the cutscene with the Kukkos will also start playing at the same time. If I close the text box during this cutscene and then play Saria's song next to the guy once the cutscene is over, I can choose to talk to Saria. And for some reason, that series of actions I just took makes the guy give me the broken Goron sword, as if I had spoken to him as Adult Link as part of that side quest. So I got the broken Goron sword as Young Link, something that's never supposed to be possible. Now, you might be wondering why I bothered doing this. Like I mentioned, this item is just part of a series of trading side quests. It's not a weapon you can use, and I can't use it for anything. But getting this broken Goron sword was just the first step. Next, I left Kakariko and headed for Lake Hylia. My destination was the fishing pond. Before heading inside, I did the equip swap glitch again to put the broken Goron sword on my right C button specifically. After that, I headed into the pond. I paid the guy at the counter to play the fishing game, and then I swam into the water. Once in the water, I swam as close as I could to the shore without making Link stand on the ground. Then I tapped the A button briefly to make Link dive for a second, and started mashing B. This allowed me to cast the rod, but instead of having the fishing controls come up, I was able to keep moving as Link. So then I just headed for the door. Normally, the man at the counter stops you from leaving with the rod, but with this glitch active, I was able to just walk right out. Now instead of my sword, I have the fishing rod as my B button item. Then, by doing a series of steps I'll put on screen, I managed to replace the fishing rod on the B button with a bottle while catching bugs. And for whatever reason, catching bugs in a bottle like this while the broken Goron Sword is on the C right button gives me the Shadow Medallion and the Spirit Medallion, just like that. Also, I apparently managed to delete the Fire Medallion and give myself the Forest Medallion. After that, I can just go to the Equipment menu and select the Kokiri Sword. Even though it's already highlighted as if it's equipped, selecting it will equip it back over the bottle. And just like that, all is back to normal. So, with the Spirit Medallion collected, Young Link's journey through the temples was finished. All that was left now was the final battle. Now, if you're familiar with Ocarina of Time glitches, then you might know something interesting about the Shadow and Spirit medallions. Since the Shadow Temple and the Spirit Temple are intended to be the final two temples you do, the game only checks for those two medallions for endgame stuff. 
If I had done this trick as Adult Link, I could head to the Temple of Time to get the Light Arrows and open the bridge to Ganon's castle even if I had never done any dungeon in the game. Unfortunately, the Light Arrow cutscene doesn't play in the Temple of Time for Young Link, and Ganon's castle doesn't exist yet. So even if I got to Ganon's castle, I couldn't actually defeat Ganondorf because I don't have the Light Arrows. Luckily for me though, I actually didn't need to fight Ganondorf. After stocking back up in the castle town, I saved and reset to end up back in Kokiri Forest. Inside of Link's house, I paused the game, then unpaused and headed outside and off to the Great Deku Tree. Once inside, I made my way down to the boss room. In this room, I aimed myself at the door, then emptied my bugs and re-caught them so Link had the full bottle in his hand. Then I ran backwards until the bump started to decline, and did three backflips when it did. While in mid-air during the third, I pressed the button for the bottle followed by the sword button in quick succession, and as I jumped into the warp, Link started playing his sword as an ocarina. But more importantly, doing this glitch interrupted the warp cutscene. By now doing a series of specific movements, I can exit through the door and end up warping straight to Ganon's castle. Now, do you remember back in the beginning when I told you not to get the Kokiri's Emerald? This is why. I tried this glitch for actual hours, even trying methods that were supposedly very easy to pull off, and I could not get it to work at all. After doing some research though, I found out that this glitch requires the Kokiri's Emerald cutscene to still be available, and since I already got that way back at the start of the game, this glitch isn't possible anymore. So I had no choice but to start a new save file for this trick. As I'm sure you can understand, I didn't want to replay the entire game just for one trick, and this could all be done on one save file if you didn't watch that cutscene, so just pretend that I have all my heart containers and stuff. <laughs> After going into the entrance in front of me, I was teleported to the top of Ganon's castle, and was put into the cutscene that comes immediately after you beat Ganondorf. This meant that even though I couldn't get the light arrows to fight him with, I could just skip past that fight with this trick. But after making it this far, I wanted to at least experience Ganon's castle as young Link. Once again, I can't get the light arrow so I can't actually defeat Ganondorf, but saving the game and resetting brings you to the entrance of a dungeon, so I did that to end up inside the castle. Just for fun, after that I climbed up the tower, fighting things along the way using the Deku Stick Crouch Stab trick. Going up the final staircase as young Link was super cool, and watching the cutscene was cool too. But as I mentioned, I can't actually beat Ganondorf here, so instead I went back to the top of the tower and did this. We'll say this counts. Then I did the escape, which was basically the same as ever. After making it outside, Ganon's castle fell like a paper craft, and then it was time for the final battle. Ganondorf jumped out of the debris and transformed into Ganon for the battle. He swung at Link and somehow knocked the Master Sword he never had out of his hands. Fortunately, young Link is so short that you can just run under Ganon's legs without rolling or anything, and then you can easily jump slash at his tail with a Deku Stick. Do that three times, and Ganon briefly goes down, opening the way to the Master Sword. I went and grabbed it, and young Link actually does have the Master Sword equipped now. It still looks like the Kokiri Sword, but when you swing it you can see that the slash range goes far beyond the Kokiri Sword's range. Pretty cool. In the next phase, I ran under Ganon, did one jump slash with the sword, then backed a good distance away from Ganon and shielded. He'd do a swing and hit the shield, and then I ran under him to jump slash at the tail again and repeat. Just a few of those, and he went down. After Zelda used her Dragon Ball powers on him, I swung at him for the finishing blow. And just look at how devastating that looks. And with that, the adventure was over. You can indeed beat Ocarina of Time using only Young Link, for the most part. The Spirit Temple and Ganondorf are impossible, or are at least insanely difficult to do normally, but you can still beat every other temple, get the Spirit Medallion, defeat Ganon, and get to the credits as Young Link. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, would I recommend any of you watching try this? Absolutely not. <laughs> at several points throughout the adventure, I experienced some of the most agonizingly boring gameplay I've ever had from this game. It was really cool to learn more about the game's glitches and get better at performing them as I made progress, and I think it's cool to watch, so I'm glad I did it, but I can't recommend trying it yourself. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed watching me try it, and thanks for watching.